Hello everybody and happy Friday, October the, what are we on? <laughs> October the 10th. Oh my goodness, what a time we've been through with those eclipses, two hurricanes, um, and just like the, the, the world is crazy right now. And we get Pluto stationing direct today, which I don't know if I'm going to get time to make a video about. Anyway, this is the week ahead forecast, except it's actually the week, two weeks ahead forecast. So, you know, feel free to kind of come back and watch the rest later, or there's always a transcript below as well. And I've also pulled three cards for each week uh, because they kind of feel quite different the, the weeks as, you, as you'll see as we go through. Um, as we start the week, you know, I'm recording this on Friday, Venus Day, but it is, um, oh, gosh, I'm having quite a lot of technical dis issues as well, just so you know, but um, so hopefully none on this. Um, as we, uh, as I record this, Pluto has not stationed retrograde yet, direct, sorry. Um, but Pluto stations direct tonight. So maybe I'll start by looking at that and just talk a little bit about that. Then we'll go into uh, the week starting Sunday, the, the 12th, and then go right through for two weeks. OK, so let me share my chart. And yeah, like I said, stay to the end. Or maybe at to, when I get to the end of the first week, I'll show the cards for that first week, if I remember. <laughs> um, Jupiter station retrograde opposing my sun and, and we'll go back to my moon. And so my ADHD is just like... Phew. Anyway, so here we are on Friday. It's actually the 11th, not the 10th. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Anyway... As I mentioned, Pluto um, is about to station um, retrograde. Now, I do want to tell you one interesting, really interesting fact that I wouldn't normally uh, look at in these weekly ones. But midpoints, I don't always use them because there's so much to look at. And, you know, clearly I, I look at a lot already. Um, as a reminder, I do look at the nitty gritty of the moon's aspects and mine uh, and the asteroids and the centaurs in my written Substack posts for paid subscribers. So if you want to be in on those, please, please consider becoming a paid subscriber. I also have a private members membership community called The Nest that can be found on my website where we do a call a week except this week because I'll be out. So that's why I'm doing two weeks. I'm going to an astrology re retreat where I'm actually facilitating a peer group and hanging out with other astrologers. But anyway, so just one point of interest with these eclipses and these hurricanes. The first um, Hurricane Helene was, and there's lots of other points of interest that I'm not going to go into. Hurricane H Helene was... Um, on that last eclipse, that was at 10 degrees Libra. Now, um, Hurricane Milton came right in between Jupiter stationing retrograde and Pluto stationing direct. And the midpoint of those two eclipses, of, of those two planets, that having two planets stationed so close to each other, one on the 9th, one today on the 11th, that midpoint was exactly opposite the point of the eclipse. So I'm going to get it out there. But, you know, astrology just amazes me all the time. But apart from that, apparently I started my printout on the right date, on the wrong date, because I thought we we're on the 10th. But that's fine. Um, in fact, I'm just going to go for it and just start on the 12th, even though that's Saturday. And I kind of looked at that last week, but I just kind of want us to tune in to where we're at. OK, so as um, tomorrow morning, um, you can see that Saturday the 12th, I always used Eastern time. 
we have the moon in Aquarius. Pluto has stationed um, direct. Pluto will sit at this point, 29 degrees 38, until October the 17th, which is the day of the full moon, which is also a super moon and kind of like part of this eclipse energy. So we're not out of this kind of real intense energy just yet. So that's why I say the first week is, is kind of rather intense and the second week less so energetically. Other things to kind of note um, as we go into this week, again, not things I always look at, but I'm just quickly going to add something else and then take it out. Okay. Uranus is about to conjunct Algol again. Now, when um, the first assassination attempt was um, happened on um, on forty five, and also this kind of really the start of people kind of calling for Biden to step down because that was opposing his son. We had Mars, Uranus, and Algol all conjunct. Mars has moved on. But Algol is going to go retrograde, sorry, Uranus is going to go retrograde over Algol, so-called demon star, but also kind of, to my mind, Medusa fighting the patriarchy. You know, she's, she, you know, a, a lot of people are really rewriting some of these stories that were created by men. And, you know, they're not real. You know, they are archetypes. And a lot of the archetypes were described with feminine demon, male, the what, the hero, if you like. So anyway, Uranus is going to be conjunct Algol again. So I will kind of come back into that. And other things to tune into is, um, well, Mars is well in the shadow of his retrograde, but he will not go retrograde till later in the year. Um, I'm going to look at some other aspects in a bit, but there's nothing else I kind of want to point out. But Pluto stationing direct and spending, you know, his last month and a bit in the sign of Capricorn for 250 years is a big, big turning point. And, you know, Pluto retrogrades. Pluto goes retrograde every year, as do like most of the fast, the slower moving outer planets. It's really only the points around the station point that are big kind of churny kind of energies. So it's significant that Pluto is going to sit at this degree for those for that next um, five and a bit weeks, I think it is. But anyway, you know, we are he's kind of mopping up that journey that he started in 2008 or she, whichever, you know. <laughs> also on the 12th, and I may have mentioned it last week. Um, but I'm going to mention it again because I don't know if I've noticed the whole thing. Jupiter and Chiron that you can see at this point, they're actually exactly um, sextile to each other. They have been both pointing at Venus, for, um, forming a finger of fate, finger of God. And of course, uh, Venus was is Libra's guide where we had that last solar eclipse. Venus is also Taurus guide where we have Uranus and um, and Algol meeting. And, and Venus is really in the sign of Scorpio, which is, is this whole week's very Plutonic, this first week. But Venus in Scorpio is intense and deep and very purgy and very kind of can be quite stingy. But, um, you know, this finger of fate really to me coming from Chiron the shaman but also the wound Aries we've been looking at our wound and Gemini in um, at Jupiter in Gemini going retrograde looking at our how we think how we perceive you know opening our mind um, revisiting some of our big beliefs and especially around community and and people that we know this is pointing at this. This is really kind of saying, you know, uh, you know, we we need this more, um, uh, what intimate kind of connection with all that is, and we are really being asked to step into that. And there's lots of other things it could say, but I'm. It's just 
I'm not going to go on and on um, because I've said a lot already um, about that. Okay, so let's go into the actual week ahead. So October the 13th is Sunday. Um, I always use Eastern time as a start date because, but you can adjust for your time zones. The aspects happen at the same time everywhere in the world. But for example, this is at 12 a.m. Eastern. So the aspect will happen at um, 5 a.m. in the UK on universal time. So timeanddate.com is good for times or world time buddy. I like those two for adjusting to your time zones. Okay, so on October the 13th, Mercury is starting to finish um, their journey in the sign of Libra. Mercury was in aspect to Jupiter, in Jupiter's sign when Jupiter stationed retrograde. Jupiter has actually moved two degrees by the start, uh, two minutes, not two degrees, by the start of the week. And Mercury um, then squares off to Pluto. So we have we have those two stations. Mercury was aspecting one of the retrograde stations as it stationed retrograde. And now Mercury aspects Pluto that is still at the station degree. This is big changes in perceptions and thinking and opening your mind. This is huge. You know, this is moving towards desiring Libra, peace, harmony, creating, getting rid of these um, un unequitable things. But this is in everything in our lives. So, you know, Mercury is the messenger, but he's also the psychopomp and the messenger of the gods, he's telling us something very big about what's happening out there and how we are supposed to kind of reflect on that and think about it and speak about it. OK, and then um, later on October the 13th, Mercury actually dips into the sign of Scorpio, um, visit, uh, uh, joining Venus in the sign of Scorpio. And our thinking starts to really dive into those shadows and those deep, deep waters. And I actually think there's going to be an awful lot more of the detritus and the slime of the uh, corrupt and the, um, and the um, lack of integrity in more people. I think there's going to be a lot more revealed in so many ways. But right after Mercury moves into the sign of Scorpio, the moon leaves Aquarius that day and also moves into a water sign Pisces. So, you know, that's going to be that's going to kind of plunge us into the waters of um, intuition, sensing, but also kind of revealing from the clouds and the shadows and the deep waters um, working together. And it's going to be a bit emotional. Um, for that period, especially because the full moon is building as well. And also on the 13th, Mars over here um, squares off to Chiron, which also means you'll make a semi sextile to Jupiter. So it's activating that like big opportunities for rethinking how we do Mars, how we take action, how we um, put ourselves first. Um, whether we're aggressive or whether we kind of have that more compassionate kind of warrior energy, um, big opportunities for that in this period. Then on the 13th, oh my goodness. <laughs> so all of this is lining up at 21 degrees. So I'm actually going to move the chart, which I don't always do for things because it's such a big lineup at 21 degrees. And two plus one, that's the divine feminine and the masculine. And three is a very creative number, by the way. So they've got all this stuff. Jupiter's still at 21 degrees, still really in sextile to Chiron. They've only moved three minutes apart. Mars has squared Chiron as well. And then the sun comes up and, you know, the core, ourselves, opposes Chiron, squares Mars in Cancer making this a big push to initiate change. It is 
thankfully more of a T-square than a cardinal grand cross, but though it's loosely connected to Pluto over here in Capricorn. But if you think about building on the eclipse and all the things that have been happening, it really feels that this is a big, big push to all kind of move together and remember that we're all family, whether, you know, even though we're individuals and unique in each one and new alliances are going to be formed, which is new communications, new um, all kinds of things like that. So, you know, this uh, I, th I think it does have a positive kind of push in the end. But, you know, Mars in Cancer can be rather sensitive as well. And if our basis of security is threatened, you know, people might be reactive. But, you know, overall, you know, you're here because you know the way I work and you know that I deal with, you know, if you understand what's happening, how you can respond can be a little different. So right on to the 14th, finally. So the first day is a huge day. Oh, I don't think there's any um, other days as big as that, except maybe one we'll go through and look. So I'm just going to adjust the chart again and get on to the 14th. So oh, here we are on to Monday, the 14th. And on the 14th, um, the sun actually perfects its square to Mars early in the morning. So that that T-square is very active. But then on the 14th, Mercury has moved into the sign of Scorpio. We'll actually meet um, dwarf planet Haumea here. She's that planet of uh, creation. But birthing can be messy. But, you know, just meant so I'd mention that. On the 14th later, though, a bigger aspect that's really kind of more personal. Venus is going to oppose Uranus. Now I'm going to get that one exact as well, because Venus is um, the guide or ruler of the sign that Uranus is in. And um, so Venus has got to 26 degrees 30. And look at this, you know, Uranus has just passed back over Algol. They're really kind of at the same degree. This could bring something back that started um, back around the time that 45's first assassination attempt uh, happened and that, you know, the calls for Biden to step down happened. I don't want to kind of really um, uh, over egg it, but I will say, so I am going to, um, I'm going to actually pull you back to it a little bit. So the easy way to do that, just to remind you of the date, was that it was July the 15th that these um, three met at 26 degrees. Okay, so you can see that there. All right. So this Venus opposing um, Uranus is coming back to look at that again. Take a good look, hard look at it and say, what's changed? You know, where do we go now? Venus in Scorpio, to my mind, is the divine feminine saying, you know, we need this radical change. Shout, shout, shout. We, we need to develop this resilience. We need to take out we need to be empowered. All that kind of energy is uh, kind of enormous on this. And Venus is, is facing alcohol direct as well and saying, yeah, I hear you. Time to chop the head off that beast, which is the patriarchy, to be, put it kind of simply. OK, so on to the 15th, because... Um, and, oh, hang on a second. Yep, yeah, the moon's still in Pisces. You can see that. So over here. And as a reminder, again, Daily Substack blog does those um, aspects. Okay, so 12 a.m. October the 15th, Tuesday. Oh, this first week feels pretty big, to be honest. But the 15th... Um, the moon will move into Aries and we're heading towards that Aries full moon. So the moon will enter the sign of 
Aries at 4.34 p.m. on the 15th. So finishing up the journey in Pisces first. So still quite emotional, right? And adding to that emotion, again, Venus now. she We've got quite a lot of Venus action, right? She now trines Neptune. And Venus-Neptune aspects are quite lovely, but this one is so emotional. You know, there's such a lot going on. We're still under the big energy of the eclipses that, you know, you could feel very empathic, but also really oceanically em emotional during this time. There could be a little bit more water events. You know, Pluto is still at the um, station degree. An example is that this is only, what, four days away. And I just saw a report from a, a decent weather guy in Florida that a, a Floridian recommended me to saying that, you know, the river water levels are, it, the, the devastation of Milton might not have been as bad as they were concerned about. And the surge wasn't, the storm surge, but it's still raining and there's still rain falling and the river levels are rising and there could still be some flooding. I'm not saying there will be, but I'm just saying it feels like that. It feels like we're being deluged in a way at the moment. OK, so, you know, it's coming at us emotionally. It's a lot and there's a lot to deal with. But the good thing also about Venus Neptune is it's very creative, but also very purgy and cleansing as well. So there may be some purging and cleansing coming um, throughout this period. Now on to the 16th. There are no major aspects, so we can move on a little bit. So on the 17th, Pluto will move finally off that station degree a bit later in the day, clearly. And we have the full moon. And I've done a whole video on it. But, but the full moon is conjunct Eris. And she is the truth teller and, you know, revealer of artifice and unfairness. Um, uh, some people call her hate. I don't but then it can feel like that I guess to some people when things get shaken up and the sun is going to be conjunct Juno who I don't normally talk about in these um these reports but she is the sacred partnership asteroid and um the full moon is going to be square to Mars in Cancer remember we're learning to be this more compassionate warrior more protective more guardian than attacking so, you know, it's a big full moon and it is a super moon, which means the moon is quite close to Earth from our perspective. So it's big energy. And um, but then things are going to ease slightly to my mind after this. But on the 17th, after the full moon, um, Venus will also sextile Pluto. And uh, that's actually still at that um degree this is a very purging uh, still a, not moved off the station direct degree this again is another purging um purging the patriarchy purging those old rules purging being controlled purging being taken advantage of or giving your power away or whatever you want to call it it's also purging a lot of the structures um, and old rules that we've been um living by for um, a long, long time. So also on the 17th, then later, Venus will actually move into Sagittarius. Yay! And that's got quite a lighter feel. Venus in Sagittarius is creating a vision for the future, shooting her arrows where she wants to go. It's forward moving. And I kind of love that that's happening right after the full moon as we start to, um, that starts to wane. And all these oppositions and conjunctions with Eris and um, Juno will also occur right after the full moon on the 17th. So I'm not going to go into that one yet again. And that's it. Then on to the 18th. So what day are we on? There's no major aspects at all, but you can see that the moon has moved into Taurus for a couple of days as well. 
And so, you know, that's a chance to really get a bit more grounded and rooted and really kind of settle into what's coming from all this energy. Um, powerful, right? And then on the 19th, the moon will finish up that journey in Taurus and move into Gemini at 4.07 p.m. But there's no major aspects. And it's kind of almost, to my mind, a little bit like we breathe a big sigh of release. Like, of course, there are lunar aspects, there's asteroid aspects. But of the major planets, um, it's like for those couple of days after the full moon, and after the first week, which is still rather intense and um, and kind of wild, <laughs> it's almost like we've been given this opportunity to really kind of just take a breath and settle in. So I have remembered to show the cards for the first week, after the first week, and then we'll move on to the second week. Before I do, I forgot to remind you to please, please subscribe, give me thumbs up, leave me a comment. I love to hear them. And if I'm not for you, I'm not for you. So no need to, you know, just move on wherever you're listening to this. So this is the cards for the first week. Now, the first week, the first card we get is called the failure card. And it's the seven of discs. But I do want to point out that it is reversed. So Bear with me a minute. I'm giving you my book, Interpretation, The Complete Guide to Tarot and Astrology. And um, I have an Amazon store below if you want to go and read it. But this is like, oh, it's been such a lot. And I kind of feel it today. I, you know, I, I don't want to actually give up, but it, it feels like, oh, this is too much. Let me give up a little bit. You know, I want to give up. Um, I feel impatient for the change that's coming. I listened to a podcast this morning on the bulwark and, and, you know, Tim Miller and the other guy that runs it, can't remember his name. They were just going, I'm just sick of this. I'm just sick of this guy, meaning Trump. I mean, clearly I'm not on his side <laughs> and I'm just tired, you know, and we're ready for this to be over now. And they were all expressing it. Sarah Longwell on there too. They're all just going, this is just, uh, this point, this last 29 days or whatever it was, as they were recording it um, uh, to the election is really hard. And this one's really hard. And this kind of is what this failure card is saying to me. But I do want to read you from um, Anjali's Aryan book, uh, Aryan's book as well because I was called to bring out these big, big boy cards, as I call them, for these um, big energies that we're in. And she says, uh, this is, um, she says, this is um, a picture of fear or, or fear of failure or fear of success, which are, by the way, two of the biggest fears in the world. And, and this is, you know, your energy might feel constructed, um, constricted, sorry, not constructed, constricted. And, and you may feel like I'm tired, I've had enough of this. So you probably aren't failing. It's probably more of the fear of like, what if we haven't got this? What if, you know, we don't come out of this crazy time? Okay. So it's very emotional. I talked to that deep emotion uh, earlier in the week. Then, of course, though, this is the Uranus card, which is interesting. We have the Fool, and that's a new journey. I do think some optimism is going to return as the, um, as the week progresses, a sense of possibility of we're at this, the verge of this new start. And so, uh, you know, I urge you to kind of tap into the Fool's energy. Again, I want to look at... Um, Angelis Arian's book, because it's such a good book. So this is, um, I'll read you the quote from the Bhagavad Gita. Fear not, what is not real never was and never will be. What is real always was and cannot be destroyed. I'll let you sit with that. And uh, she said that this is the principle of courage, no fear, ecstasy and peak experience. Okay. So, you know, you're going to be able to tap into that real kind of energy of no fear. 
uh, the Aries uh, full moon might help you to do that really, to go really, okay, tap into that center and go forward courageously because Aries is very, very courageous and so on and so forth. And I, I just do want to, because I want to plug my book a little bit. I've never really done that enough. Um, but this is, my book says spontaneity, spontaneity, originality, personal freedom, potential, uniqueness, and fearlessness. And I'm going to add courage to it as well. So tap into that. Then, you know, but it's still a lot. <laughs> and then we kind of get towards the end of the week where we're just under that full moon energy, which is so potent. It's a really big full moon again. And we get the Ten of Cups, which is satiety. So let me um, get my amazing book open again for her interpretation of that. So this is um, emotional contentment and satisfaction. Um, it comes from deep within and radiates out in all aspects of life. And you can see she's got the, the tree of life here and cups are always emotions. I do think kind of after a rough start, because we're coming out of a really bad time, we'll sense, feel this sense of possibility, then go, you know, actually, you know, emotionally, I've, I'm doing the work, I feel good, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, I'm feeling pretty fulfilled. Okay, so let's see what my book has to say about this card. <laughs> you think I'd remember, wouldn't you, right? But I'm plugging my book too. So, and this is upright, of course. So this is emotional fulfillment, abundance and harmony. I think that might kick in when the moon moves into Taurus after the full moon. You'll go, okay, I can actually really look at what I've got, see gratitude and go, it's okay, we've got this kind of thing. All right, so let's move on to the astrology for week two. <laughs> and I want the chart, of course. Oh, is it gone? There it is. <laughs> and I need to bring up my list of aspects. So we're going to move on to the 20th and feel free to kind of stop the video and come back to it after that if it's all too much or listen and listen again. And again, the 20th, we have no major aspects, but you can see the moon has moved into Gemini for a couple of days. So it gets more curious and, um, and more chatty and more sociable. So there's that. And then on... Um, uh, the 21st, late in the day, not till 6.49 p.m. in the evening, the moon will move into their own sign of cancer. And things will get a, a little bit more emotional again, but Mars will then square Eris over here. So Mars and Eris are brother and sister. Okay, and you know, I think there's too much nonsense really about Mars being in detriment in cancer. I really think we are learning to be this compassionate, caring guardian Mars rather than the over trigger happy Mars that it can be. But, you know, Mars can be a little bit trigger happy in cancer. But this square to Eris, who is the truth teller, and the revealer of unfairness and things like that. I kind of think she's telling him, you know, kind of look what all this aggression has done and let's do things differently and shake tables and do things differently from now on. Of course, it's in a T-square to Juno too, just mentioning and really the sun saying, you know, remember that we're all in this together. So, you know, it's it's up to us whether we heed these messages and really kind of move into the higher energy of these planets as we go through. Now, or, then we move on to October 22nd. You can see that now the moon is in Cancer and Mercury has been quite quiet in the sign of Scorpio, right? Deep thinking, really some pondering kind of energy, especially because Pluto just stationed direct and Mars, which is the traditional guide for Scorpio, 
has been activated. We're really thinking about how we act, what our actions are, and how we tackle kind of the, the shadow, for want of a better word, that we want to deal with out there and within. But on um, October the 22nd, Mars will come up and, sorry, Mercury will come up and make a water trine to Scorpio, I mean to Saturn in Pisces, sorry, uh, retrograde. Um, and we are really kind of going to let go of some more of these limiting beliefs and more is going to be revealed from those shadows around this time. I can tell you it's like something, either they reveal themselves or there's something in their news. But those people who have re really been abusing their power and manipulating are being outed. And once they're revealed, you can out the damn spot, right? Also on October the 22nd, they're adding to this kind of purging and kind of like, I see it now, I can, we can do things differently, is the sun squaring Pluto. Now, that's for the last time in these signs, right? Because Pluto's leaving Capricorn for good on November the 19th, which um, after that is an interesting time. But anyway, so the sun squares off to Pluto and says, OK, I understand the assignment. Assignment. We've really got to lean in and um, get build our resilience and and fight these shadows within and without okay and then the sun moves into pluto sign scorpio so it's like okay i see you i understand the assignment now we have to do the purging and step into our inner resilience and real deep strength plus on a more light level it's scorpio season halloween is coming so then still on October the 22nd, Venus over here, now, now firmly in Sagittarius, aspects the moon's nodes who are still at the degree of the eclipses for this whole two-week period, right? Um, so, you know, this is remind something kind of is coming back from all this period, from the eclipses, Okay, saying, okay, it's time to vision something differently and be co-creative and, and kind of shoot our arrows into what we do want and take some action. Now on to the um, 23rd. Okay, just going to my list. There are no major aspects on the 23rd. The moon is in their own sign. Um, you know, we'll look at the moon's aspects clearly when um, I do my daily written things. But um, Pluto has actually now moved two minutes. So he's starting to pick up speed. Um, we're kind of out of that really churny zone of a Pluto station. And the moon is waning towards the next new moon. Eclipse season unfolds over months but we're kind of out of the most intense kind of point of it but it kind of fallout will keep going so um 24th um the moon moves into their inside libra so it's sorry not oh, sorry. the moon moves into leo not their own sign moves out of their own sign into leo and Moon in Leo is a lot more fun, but it's also very tender hearted and, you know, easily kind of has its balloon pricks, a bit sensitive, but very creative. So that's for a couple of days. And then on, um, on the 24th, Mercury will actually sextile series. And I think a lot of what we're dealing with in this post eclipse crazy energy period is more discussions about climate change and about our abusing climate change and, you know, revealing all these people that think that the government deliberately created um, Helene, for example, to target red states and oh, things like that. Now, I'm not saying there's never been any weather manipulation. There has been cloud seeding, 
there has been things like that. Um, one was in Vietnam, and that was kind of to uh, stop an attempt, at least, to stop the Vietnamese and things. But I don't think, uh, as a whole, um, cloud seeding has been tried to create rain where we need it and things. I don't think it's been hugely successful from what I read. You might have a different view on that. And I'm not saying that scientists don't try to um, do some kind of manipulation, but are they doing it for evil intent? And is it the government doing it? I'm not hugely sure about that. Um, I don't think so personally, but maybe I'll be wrong. So anyway, Mercury Sextile series, though, does speak to me of revealing more about that, talking more about that. Then on the 24th as well, with the moon um, now moved into Leo, we have the last quarter moon in fixed signs. That's a real kind of letting go kind of thing. Crisis of consciousness. Kind of, what are we doing? What have we done? Have we reached rock bottom yet? You know, there's a lot of thinking about that right now. I literally saw somebody just say, have we reached rock bottom? And um, then on to, no, we're still on October the 24th, Mars, <laughs> this is interesting, will sextile um, Uranus. And remember, you know, that we had that their conjunction back in July, changed the whole um, presidential race in the US. This Martin, it's a it's a sextile, and I think that's going to push forward the change that's come from then. But I'm convinced she's going to win. So just to go back to the election, okay. So then on to Friday, October the twenty fifth, and I believe we have no major aspects again. I'm correct. So we end the week like kind of with a big sigh. We're in the waning moon, no major aspects. We can finally kind of settle in and reflect on it and really move forward to what brings us some joy. So that's it, really. Um, we're on the Saturday. There's no major aspects on the last two days of the week. So stop the share and we'll go to the... Um, uh, last cards all right here they are which are much nicer so just look at these earthy cards right they're all discs sorry that's the princess of discs and i did not show you that one um so i'm sorry it says it up here so princess of discs mm -hmm is the mastery and creativity and birth of new forms. All right, now she's reversed though, and the top deck doesn't, or this book, and Angelis Arian, does not really look at the reversed, but let's see what the reverse says about that. This is, is kind of feeling a little bit worn out again, saying, you know, are, are we birthing these new forms? You know, like, I'm, I'm kind of, pregnant look she's a pregnant person with these possibilities um we've been through the briar patch and and we're ready to birth this new life but it's such a long labor such a long birth i'm tired again at the start of the week i think coming off that full moon however look at these next cards upright we immediately get the next card which is the prince of discs which is the builder of new worlds, you know, look at him carrying the world there. It can mean exercise as well at a real personal level. This is the architect. This is the designer and very steel-like and determined with that bull there, which is very Taurian, okay? And, um, and this one is saying steady progress, diligence, staying the course, patience and practicality. Okay, so this is a real kind of get rooted, dig in and keep going. And then look at this. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it when I pulled these cards. I was mighty happy, I can tell you. 
So the ace of discs. <laughs> Let's see what Anjali's Arian has to say about this card. This is success that is experienced both internally and externally. Internal success is represented by the four sets of angel wings here, and uh, which represents the four levels of success in consciousness, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. And, and there's more she goes on, but this really is an indication that you're no longer willing to support the dichotomy of experiencing internal success and not external success. And this is an indication that there is the sense of success that has manifested deeply inside as well as externally. So this really is the highest of the manifestation cards. It is the capacity to manifest or produce what we want in both internal and external worlds. Well, now let's see what my book has to say. <laughs> it's a lot simpler than hers, but both work. So this is new beginnings. This is reward and response of new responsibility and um, abundance material gain in some way as well. It's a great card to kind of finish, finish that last week on, because then where are we then? Uh, you know, for those of us in the US who, you know, clearly, you know, we're in the election season and it's a big election, but it's also a big election for the world. So please forgive me for talking about it all the time. When I do the next report in two weeks time, it will start October the 27th, of course, and run to November the 3rd, which is only two weeks before the election, two days, sorry, two days before the election. So look for that report as well. Um, I also did a, another video on which one would win, and it just confirmed things I'd said and intuited before, but it's still... I think we're going to go through these moments of, oh, uh, really? Is this really going to happen? The, this, this period is so intense. and um, But luckily that last week is less so. So I hope you feel reassured. <laughs> and I will see you in two weeks for a week ahead report beginning that week as we lead into our big election. Peace out. Mm-hmm. <laughs>